My name is Emily Tuchinska, and I am a poet from Fairfax, Virginia. I place myself kind of outside of that school of nature poetry. I'm not consciously thinking about writing about it, but it's such a huge part of my everyday and my life. Um, I spend a lot of time out, outside. I have three children who are always outside with me and we're going places and doing things outdoors. Uh, I'm here staying in Dan's cabin with my sister and because of the pandemic we knew we were going to be trying to avoid going to the grocery stores and things while we were here so we just both brought several bags of groceries that we culled from our own pantries and gardens to bring with us and it's been really easy for us just cooking our meals without how plan of what we're going to cook, but just looking at what's there on the shelf and then pulling from that to pull together a meal. And I think the writing for me sort of works that same way. That I don't come in with a preconceived notion of like I have to come up with this idea of what I'm going to write about, but I'm pulling from the things that are a part of my life that I'm encountering every day. So I just try to stay open to see what the ingredients are in the day and then the poem comes naturally out of that. A poem has to be more than just description. I start by description and careful observation but then I'm always looking for how to open it up and how, how to allow it to have that bigger voice that's in the poem. Um, it was really wonderful being here and having the quiet and space and solitude and particularly just being out in nature and spending so much time walking every day, especially through forest, really frees your mind to kind of wander and make those free associations. So I came back to those notes on the beach pee and um, just as I was walking that I had this image of the plant with its leaves folded up. The plant sort of holds its own, the, the little tendril, the, the new tender sprouts that are growing in that harsh environment, the plant protects inside its own leaves. And I had this image of my daughter um, playing the little game of guess what's in my hands, holding something in her hands, so it was sort of this metaphor or moment that came to me and I, I knew that I could pull that into the poem about the beach pea and then allow it to be about more than just the beach pea, allow it to get into this ideas of uncertainty and not knowing. Unsheltered, the beach pea blues its glaucous green against the sun. Between clasped leaves, it guards its own tender bud and tendril, the way my daughter hides a secret in her hands. Likely, some stone or shell. The game is in my not knowing. I make wild, improbable guesses. The egg of an albatross, a blue whale's tear. The beach pea doesn't know where it should grow. The right place conjures it a lucky, lonely tossle that roots where nothing's rooted. Against the scattering wind, it makes its own stillness. It turns its flower inward, petals closed around its pollen like a mouth that won't answer. Slowly, my daughter unfolds her fingers to show me nothing, an invisible, imagined something she lets the breeze nuzzle from her palm the way a horse lips sugar from an open hand.
for me, the cure to writer's block is just to being really open to the things that I'm seeing in my life and um, recording writing sort of freely about it. I carry this little blue notebook with me wherever I've been going in the park and it's not a special notebook and I just write in it with this plain ballpoint pen and there's a saying about writing that if you have writer's block you should just lower your standards, well-known writer said. So in here my standards are very low and I'm just recording the things that I see, just trying to write a lot freely, knowing that no one's going to read it, and um, taking a lot of notes and letting myself think even the bad thoughts that aren't very good poems and writing those down. That kind of freedom, I think, is really important for a creative artist to have a space where they feel entirely free to um, think without self-criticizing. <laughs> One thing that I think is special about this landscape is the two different senses of scale that you're in all the time. There's this very close sort of micro scale when you're in the woods, it's very intimate. Everything's nearby, you're seeing the little teeny tiny mushrooms and the little birds that are flitting around in the trees and the plants. But then there's also um, the escarpment and of course the lake itself when you're like near those places it's just this huge expansion and your heart just flies open it's so beautiful to be in that that scale so that combination of the micro and the macro that's here in this landscape I think makes it a really special place And it was the promise of crimson to come in the leathery leaves of the oak. The red shone pink through the white bark of the birch and flickered rust in the wren's brown feathers. It deepened unseen in the decaying hemlock's heart and grated underfoot in sandstone cobbles on the trail. The red in the day was many things, but the blue in the day was simple. The blue was the blue of the sky unbroken by clouds and the blue of the lake that answered. <laughs>